This segment is brought to you by Jack Threads. Now at the top of the show, we teased how we're gonna start having fun spoofing some GOIP locating API goodness, that little fun thing you see in the top left-hand corner of the Google map that finds out where you are even though you don't have a GPS in your laptop. And if you're not familiar with, we're gonna be using a Faraday cage. Now what is a Faraday cage? basically a metal or mesh box, and it blocks, while well, among other things, radio waves. It was invented back in the 1836s by an English scientist named Michael Faraday, and as opposed to a paint bucket, I decided to go with an IKEA picture frame design, because you know how I feel about hacking IKEA. Anyway, um, first and foremost, before any, before we go any further, stand down ham radio operators. I know this is not absolutely the best. Uh, in fact, this is my Rev 1 of, uh, of my Faraday cage. But as you can see, I fit two radios in a box and I've basically um, folded a whole crap ton of tinfoil until it blocks everything out. You do, you know, a, a uh, IW list, uh, your interface and then you grab for ESSIDs and you see nothing. So it's like woohoo! Now inside of here are two radios. One of these radios is going to be the uh, my typical normal hey every day this is what I connect you know this is my regular radio and then of course we have the, uh, the radio here with the monkey because he's evil and he's going to be having a lot of fun. And they are going to live in this box together and they will not be able to see anyone else. That's the idea, okay? So that little evil monkey radio, all right, that's going to be running MDK3. Now MDK3 is a tool that exploits weaknesses in 802.11 protocols. It was created by ASPJ with the help of the Aircrack NG team and their libraries, of course. And MDK3 can be found over at Pedro Larig's homepage and is built into the latest version of Backtrack from BacktrackLinux.org. You guys know I love that tool. So in with this, using uh, MDK3, we're going to try the beacon flood attack mode and information that we've gathered from wiggle.net. We can head over to wiggle.net here. And let me just log in. And using wiggle.net, which is a uh, just a database of you know people have come together to go ahead and, and share their war driving finds. They support uh, uploads from you know NetStumbler, MiniStumbler, Kismet, uh, a whole bunch of other awesome tools. And what's so great about this is we can come down here and say search, and we can say I don't know uh, 5412 Haran Court. Uh, state is Virginia, zip code is 23188, and say query. And yes, I'm hearkening back to the hack house. Ah, uh, sometimes you miss Williamsburg, mainly just for the cheese shop. But, uh, but here we go. I have a listing of the BSSIDs and SSID names of uh, wireless access points that were in the vicinity of the address that I gave it, including Here's one down here, uh, Williamsburg, Patriot Net, Victor's Pizza and Deli, BS Williamsburg, I don't know what that's all about. Um, one of them in here is the Pineapple House, which was pretty cool, next to an astronomically delicious pancake house. Anyway, so what I've done here, and let's, let's head over to my console uh, and cat my um, WMBG. .txt, you can see that I've added the BSSIDs or MAC addresses of and the SSIDs um, of the networks that were in that area. Okay, so that is going to happen on the monkey radio in my Faraday cage while the other radio is just chilling. And um, we're going to use, here I've got this in a screen, we're going to use MDK3 and we're going to use mode B for beacon. And we could do like a um, we could do, what is it, tac tac help B to find out more about, or what is it, um, it's not tac tac help, but, uh, well, you can do MDK3 tac tac full help and pipe that to less, and you can come down here and find out about the different test modes. B is the um, beacon flood mode, and we can see that there are various different options, one of which being tac V. It reads max and SSIDs from a file. And of course, we have a file over here with just that. Now we can do all sorts of other fun things. Remember, I said that uh, these geo, these uh, these databases 
basically map you to nearby access points based on the characteristics of those access points. So we're talking not just the BSSID or the SSID name of the network, but also you know things like what channel is it on, um, you know what kind of encryption is it using. Now, mind you, these things may change, but overall, if you've got a big enough data set, uh, things should be relatively same you know, from, from year to year, or at least you would hope so on uh, access points. So, I know that, I think there's this, this entire concept is kind of a hack, and that's why I'm trying to hack it. So, let's see if we can spoof this now using MDK3, and uh, what interface are we gonna use that on? Well, I've already brought up Mon0 using Airmon NG. Uh, in fact, I can just, Airmon NG, and I can see I have Mon0, and uh, that is based on my WLAN 2 interface, the monkey one in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, say B, and then TAC V, and then my Williamsburg TXE file. And so it's going to start broadcasting out fake access points. These aren't real. These aren't actual. You couldn't associate these if you wanted to. There's nothing on the other end. All these are are just raw frames that we're injecting into the air that are beacons and say, hey, I'm an access point, and my name is Pineapple Inn and Housing Center, and my MAC address is, you know, this one right here, right? So let's go ahead and get that going. Awesome. Because, like, if I come over to here and do, like, IW... Um, what is it, uh, WLAN 2, we're on, or WLAN 3, uh, or it's IW list, right? I have it right up here. It's IW list, W, yeah, IW list, WLAN 3 scan in the grep for the SIDs. We're going to see the uh, networks in the area. So there we go. We have successfully created an environment within this box um, where, as far as the computer should be concerned, it's seeing what it would expect to see around that area in Williamsburg. So I'm going to go over to Google Maps now. And let's see about clicking this little button in the top left, my location. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Or let's, let's hit that to find it. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Here, let's zoom out. Let's go to the center of the country. And it's snapping to this area. That's what I was afraid of. Now, if I try again with this sample, and I'm going to go ahead and clear my location data by saying clear for future visits. This is just a little bit of JavaScript that will attempt to pinpoint me. And if I just go ahead and refresh this page, and it's going to say, hey, do you want to track your physical location? And I say allow. And yeah, it's saying Richmond, California. That's where I'm stuck. What a bummer, right? I mean, we've simulated everything else. So something isn't quite going right here. I've disabled the uh, WLAN 0. That's uh, the internal wireless network card in this machine. I, I, you know, I guess I could have just built a bigger Faraday cage, run an Ethernet cable out of it, VNC it into this machine. But um, that's where I am wondering what you guys think. Is this even, you know, is this even something you want to see me continue to try? Do you want to see more experiments like this? And what are your thoughts? What do you think I could do to make this better? And um, and are you familiar with the API? And how other what how otherwise do you think I could attempt to spoof it since it is done client side? That's what I'd like to know, and that's why I'm asking you to hit up feedback at hack5.org or just leave us a little something in the comments. Okay, now stay tuned because we're going to be back in just a bit with this week's Technolist photo and trivia after a quick break. If you love alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, then listen up. You can score premium street, skate, and surfwear brands at up to 80% off every day at jackthreads.com. Now, there's normally a waiting list, but we've got the hookup. Sign up for free at jackthreads.com slash hack5 and start saving instantly without even leaving the house. Android, are you ready for the Technolust photo of the week? Yes, I am, Shannon. Me too. The Technolust photo of the week comes from Eric. He sends us this cool photo of his laptop running Backtrack, and I also sent in a very nice wallpaper available for download. And the link is in the show notes, so make sure to check that out and email us your photos to feedback at hack5.org. 
And also, Shannon, that's where everybody can tell me how I'm a noob, I'm a Faraday cage, looks like a pile of tinfoil. And you can also go over to hack5.org and find all the ways that you can subscribe and support the show. You can go over to hack5.org slash nibble and give us your four bits or hack5.org slash subscribe and find out ways to get technos delivered to you every week. Shannon, you're doing some fun stuff over in the hack shop, aren't you, this week? I'm doing tons of delicious stuff in the hack shop. Mmm, ninja stars. Yeah. Tasty. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, you could fine. probably find out about the Hack Shop in person if you're going to be at DEF CON. So basically, oh, what you right. want to do is follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and all that ways to, to see what we're up to because we'll be there. And then keep on those feeds because then you'll find out about future parties like a Season 10 launch party or stuff like that. So that's what you want to do. Oh, I love parties. And you guys ready for the trivia? Are you? I'm ready for the trivia. Okay, good, because I, I think he's still thinking about it. Last week's trivia question was, the science fiction novel by Philip K. Dick depicted an alternate reality where telepaths are normal and a mysterious canned product is the answer to all of your problems. And the answer was Ubik, or Ubik. Hmm. Yes, it's a good book if you haven't read it before. This week's question is, this company that existed in the late 80s and early 90s created the software called Procom and was prominent before TCP IP became popular. So answer over at hack5.org slash trivia to win some Hack5 swag. And once again, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the, everybody on the live stream. If you don't know, on Tuesdays we record the show and you can go over to hack5.org slash live, watch us streaming, and then get in on the chat room and be a part of the show. So without further ado, Android is Android. I'm Darren Kitchen with a tinfoil hat. I'm Shannon Morse. And we're reminding you, of course, to trust your techno last. Peace. Bye. My mic is on! Incoming! <laughs> Do that on the show. <laughs> Team power! Yay. No, let's go check the network closet for Cat 5. So I don't forget. Because I always seem to forget. Huh? It's full of kittens! Kittens! Watch out for those aliens. Aliens! Aliens! What? It's all about the bang dollars, yo! Hooray! Alright. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs>